Hi everyone, this video will discuss about MBFRs. I will be answering three questions. What are these MBFRs? At what stage of your application journey should you be attending these MBFRs? And lastly, the title of the video, why should you attend these MBFRs? I can think of three compelling reasons that every serious MBA applicant should attend these FRs. Let's start with the first question. What are these MBFRs? I will break that question into three parts. The first one is trivia. Who organizes it? Subsequently, let's look at the other two relevant questions. Who participates in it? And what actually happens in these events? Who organizes it? The MBA tour organizes it. MBA tour is an organization which is owned by GMAC, which runs the GMAT. Right. Who participates in it? Top business schools of the world. Typically, anywhere from 30 to 50 top business schools across geographies, the US, Canada, Europe, Australia, India, participate in these events. These are virtual events post-pandemic. The event that I am going to be talking about is an event which is scheduled in February 2022. Let's look at the calendar and everything in detail in the last slide of this video. Let's move to the third question, which is a more relevant one. Right? What actually happens in these events? Two activities happen in these events. The first activity, some select schools out of the participating schools make presentation to student attendees about their programs. The officials of the admission team will tell you the features of their programs and why you should be applying to the program. So you get to hear from the horse's mouth about the good things about the program. So it is essentially an information and marketing outreach activity by the school. The second one is a very, very useful activity that happens. Every participating school, not just the schools who make presentation, every participating school will have a virtual booth because the event I am talking about is a virtual event. The virtual booth is manned by officials of the admission team and could include student ambassadors and their alumni. So what you could do as a student attendee is basically you can get a lot of queries addressed about the school. If you are serious about a school and that school is participating in an MBFR, you necessarily will have to make sure that you participate in it. So you can get a lot of queries for which information may not be available on their website addressed and answered to you either by the official admissions team or by the student ambassador or by their alumni. So it's a beautiful opportunity to interact with them. So this is what happens in these events. Now the second question I'm going to be looking at, at what stage of your MBA application journey should you be attending these fairs? Let me answer it a little differently. If you're planning to start your MBA in January 2023 or September 2023 or January 2024 or September 2024, any of these four windows in which you're planning to start your MBA, not the application, the MBA program, then I think you should start attending MBA first, starting with the one which is happening in February 2022. Even if you're planning to do your MBA only in, February, in September 2024, that's roughly about two years and eight months from this point in time attend first to know what these schools are expecting, what's the kind of GMAT score, what's the kind of profile they are looking at, that you get adequate room to either improve upon your GMAT if you have already written the GMAT or target a score which will get you into that dream school and also to look at how you can enhance your profile so that you meet the requirements of the school. So you should start attending the MBFR if you are an applicant who is targeting admissions for programs starting from January 2023 all the way up to September 2024. So, looked at who should be or on what process of your application, what stage of your application process you should be attending these fairs. The third thing, which is the title of this video, why should you be attending these MBA fairs? Three compelling reasons. Start with the first one, which is I've covered a bit earlier, which is make informed decisions. Hey, let's face it, if we buy a 20,000 rupee phone, how much of a research we do for it? it took quite a lot of research. We look at the company website, we look at reviews in like marketplaces like Amazon, Flipkart. We ask people if any of our friends have the same phone, how good it is for them. So we try to look at objective information from the website. We look at reviews from people whom we do not know. We also try to get first-hand experiences from people who know, who probably own the phone. Why is that? Yes, there is a financial cost attached with that phone that you buy should make sense for you. The second equally important thing is, let's say you bought a phone for 20,000 rupees and in three weeks you realize that there is a better phone, which is probably a little more expensive or probably a little less expensive than what you have or the phone that you bought is not meeting all the requirements that you have, then there is a regret of having made this decision. The post-decision dissonance is something that you do not want to have. Yes, a phone costs 20,000 rupees, that's no mean sum of money, but it's just a phone. If you think that this is not making sense to you, you could actually throw the phone out and you can buy another one. Right. 
theoretically that's a possibility but we don't often do that we hold on to that phone for two years if this is true for a phone if this is true for a room that we are going to book overnight and we do check reviews of it in voyo rooms and other places or for a dinner that we go we check reviews about a restaurant isn't it important that you do a lot of background check about the school for which you're applying and the place where you want to do an mba let's face it majority of the mba students mba graduates do one mba in their lifetime so you can't throw this phone and buy another phone it's not a phone for you to throw it and buy another one an mba is something that's going to be there with you for the rest of your life i graduated from i am calcutta 30 years on that i am calcutta brand still opens doors to me so you want to go to a place where it's going to make sense to you something that can open doors to you and something that would make sense to you that's the most important word right there are schools which might top the ranking list but those might be the schools which may not be an ideal fit for what you are looking at so you need to do a lot of research speak to people who are graduated from the school speak to people who are studying there the official words from the people who are running the admissions team and then make up your mind as to whether that is a school that you need to apply to so if you are doing some amount of research probably about 3 to 5 hours of research for a phone that you are buying i think you need to invest a lot more time into the mba program that you want to get into you get to understand information which is published which is objective data also use this opportunity to speak to the alumni speak to the student ambassadors see if you can like interact with them after this event to find out whether that mba made sense to them and is your profile akin to theirs that it is likely to make sense to you so use it for both getting objective information and also to get the softer subjective information so make an informed decision this is the best place where you can get that informed decision done right so many schools are available and you get to interact with people you get to probably exchange emails with them that you can make informed decision second one is equally important which is to make an impression what do we mean by that indian business schools even to date placement happens through campus placement route top business schools companies actually like queue up and within a week the placement is done there this is not how job finding happens outside india you go and network to get summer internship and then you network to get a final job so your networking ability your soft skills your people skills play a big role in addition to your objective information right how well you did in undergraduate academics how well you did in the business school what is your gmat score your professional experience all of those are objective information those play a role i'm not taking any credit away from that but your networking capability plays a very important role use these mba fairs to do two things to you one to help you hone and fine tune your networking skills if you can start networking with the admissions team right away you are actually laying the ground to how you would be able to do it post mba or during your mba the second thing equally important is business school admissions team know this too how do placements happen in their schools aren't they privy to it they know that their placements happen on account of their students being able to network effectively so in addition to looking at your objective data the admissions team is also going to evaluate do you have the people skills do you have the personality skills will you be a fit to the school that your networking capability will land you in a job after the mba so use these as forums for you to impress upon them that you have good networking skills what you should be doing in an mba fair how you should basically present a case so that like you are remembered for the right reason and how you should go actually prepared to attend an mba fair are equally important those are not subject for this video my colleague shweta has done a video on this which is going live next week so if you have not subscribed to the channel already if you have not turned on your notification please do that so that when that video goes live you would get notified watch that video before attending this mba fair that i'm going to tell you in a while so it gives you an opportunity to make an impression and that plays as much a role as your objective data like your gmat score and academic qualification in the business school making an admission decision in your favor they get to meet you in a formal setting as an interview that they'll be doing but the semi formal situation also helps them make up their mind so make a good impression by attending these fairs and attending them the right way the last one for want of a better term i'm calling it the expand the basket there are two aspects to it both are intertwined so let me talk about it the first aspect is typically we tend to look at schools by looking at the ranking list of schools we look at a us news we look at business week we look at financial times ranking right we look at those and then we'll say these are the schools i want to apply to and you'll have objective criteria saying that what is the median gmat score all of those things come into play when you make a decision sometimes in this process 
we miss out on good schools which might be a great fit for us when you attend these mba fairs you get to discover i've heard a lot of our students who have discovered schools which are good schools but were not in their radar because they did not look at them as serious schools for them initially when they attended these information sessions when they spoke to people from those schools they realized that those schools were better fits for them than the schools which ranked even higher than that or they've heard of earlier so this helps you discover schools and those schools that you discover in these fairs could be the ones which will make the best sense for you so expand the basket of the schools that will be applying that's one part to it the second thing is a financial implication let me not like say that it's not important to participants of this mba fairs quite a few schools which participate in this provide application fee waiver so this application fee waiver that you get from the school let's say you intended you are planning to apply to 6 to 8 business schools the cost implications of applying to schools include the application fee the gmat score fee the language test score fee all of these things come into picture and in addition to that the time and effort you invest in applying to the school now eight schools is a lot in many ways if two to three of the schools that you were planning to apply participated in these mba fairs and gave you an application fee waiver it gives you some more financial room leg room to use that money to expand the number of schools that you are applying to right so instead of eight now you could possibly look at applying to 10 schools because you don't have to pay application fee to three of these eight schools that you initially intended to apply so expanding the basket has two aspects to it one you discover schools which probably are a better fit for you second the money that you get in terms of application fee waiver could help you apply to more schools applying to more schools increases your probability of landing an admit landing more than one admit landing an admit with some kind of a scholarship so on account of all these three reasons three compelling reasons right make an informed decision which is the most important thing because we don't do a second mba quite often so you cannot regret the decision of having joined a school a wrong school right second one it gives you an opportunity to make a very good impression if that's a school you'll finally end up joining attending these fairs and making a positive impression could win a case in your favor right and lastly the most the equally important thing is that it gives you it, it gives you an opportunity to expand the basket both in terms of discovering new schools and probably using up the money that you saved on application fee waivers to applying to some more schools now is there an event in the around the corner yes we have one which is happening in february here are the details wednesday february 16 2022 is the event scheduled for south asia and india it's a virtual event what is the timing from 6 pm to 10 pm ist registration is free of free of cost so you don't have to pay anything but because it's a free of cost event if the registration cross a particular threshold mba tour might probably restrict applicants or admissions to the event so essentially do not procrastinate any further don't delay even a minute at the end of this video click on the link which is given below or the short url for that which is given here wzko.in/feb22mba tour register for it and attend that event so what are the schools that are participating in this event harvard business school wharton has from university of berkeley ie spain isb sda bocconi right these are the marquee names that are participating a total of about 30 business schools are participating it's a great opportunity to interact with them and get information about them what's more visaco has also got a virtual booth in this event so visit our virtual booth we got a few goodies lined up if you haven't started your gmat preparation or just about in the early stages of your gmat preparation we have offers on our gmat pre recorded online courses and gmat live online classes if you already taken the gmat you are in the process of applying to business school we also have offers for people in that stage of your application cycle on our admission consulting package the premium admission consulting package we have offers for those of you who visit our virtual booth so ensure that you attend the event and also make sure that you visit visaco's virtual booth so that you get to take these goodies see you in the booth best wishes